I tried to do a whole like Morticia Adams type of thing meets Nightmare Before Christmas because this is sort of a spooky Christmas video. I don't know if it translated, but we're here and the makeup's done, so. Well, hello, I'm Erica and I am odd. What would be Christmas season without a little bit of spookiness? Hear me out. Listen, I am a scary story horror lover through and through year round. Holiday season, no exception. So I thought I would share with you today some ghost stories surrounding Christmas that I found super interesting. People whose favorite Christmas movie is Nightmare Before Christmas, you will feel me on this. Nightmare Before Christmas is not my favorite Christmas movie, but it is one of my favorites, so. We are deep within the holiday season, so I hope you all are enjoying your holiday season. We have one more video left and then it will be the new year. I can't believe it. Anyways, let's get started with some of these stories. <laughs> So I wanted to start with one ghost story that has been told year round, but apparently it originated with a Christmas ghost story tale. Fun fact, telling ghost stories during Christmas was really popular in the 1800s and early 1900s. I don't know why we lost that tradition, but I really want to bring it back because I think it's just wonderful. Kind of adds a little bit of spice within all the cheer and the holly jolly, you know what I mean. And the first story has many renditions year round, and it is the mistletoe bride of Brims Hill House. So there are many different tellings of this story, but in the Christmas version, it was a woman named Annie who was married on Christmas Day in the 17th century. She was married in the Brems Hill House of New Hampshire, England, and after the wedding and feast, it is debated whether or not Annie or her fiance proposed this sort of game, but either way, someone of the bridal party proposed that they all play a Christmas game. With mistletoe being all throughout the house, the game was basically sort of a mistletoe game where she she would hide and then whoever it be, whether it be the groomsman or the groom were to find her, they would get to have a Christmas kiss. So basically a game of hide and seek. So the guests went around looking for the bride and as time went on, they started to realize that they could not seem to find her. And everybody started to get worried. The groom was so upset and distraught and just beside himself that he could not find his bride. After time had passed, months and years, he never stopped looking for his bride. Some guests tried to say that she fled as she was objective to the marriage, but her groom knew that she was in love with him as he was her and truly never stopped looking for her. One day, about 50 years after the disappearance, the groom was wandering around the attic, knocking on the walls to where he found a secret hatch and inside was a wooden chest. He opened the wooden chest with the heavy lead and inside was the skeleton of his bride in her wedding dress, clutching a bouquet of mistletoe. And all that was left to give away her fate was the scratch marks on top of the lid of her trying to get out, but alas, she could not as she had accidentally latched herself in. I have heard this ghost story my entire life, but I had no idea it originated around Christmas. That sort of blew my mind, but that is one of my favorite ghost stories ever. I know it doesn't have to do with like a haunting or anything like that, but it's definitely spooky. So for our next story, there is a hotel in Eureka, Arkansas called the Crescent Hotel. It was built in 1866 and is notoriously haunted, but they say that the spirit activity tends to pick up during the holiday season as a staff member came downstairs to the lobby one day to find that their Christmas tree had been completely moved to the other side of the room. Still decorated, still in perfect condition, just on the complete opposite end of the lobby. Another time during the holiday season, a staff member found menus scattered all across the dining room, and many guests have reported that they see Victorian dress spirits dancing around the empty dance floor. But it seems to be only around Christmas time that a lot of people see that. I don't know. I find that very interesting that maybe there was a Christmas party there that might have gone awry or ended tragically, so that's why around the holiday season they tend to appear more, or maybe it's because there's more people there during the holiday season. I don't know but I found that one very fascinating. Next, you're going to talk about the ghost party crasher of Alcatraz. I think we all know Alcatraz. It was a prison on an island in the middle of nowhere, also called The Rock, not 
the rock but you know it's on a rock anyways alcatraz actually shut down in 1963 but it is known to have great spiritual activity and apparently during the christmas season something kind of wacky happened i guess in the 40s while it was still up and running there was a warden that decided to have a christmas party in his home nearby of course his home was on the island because very small island <laughs> and i guess during the party guests started to say that they saw a ghostly figure with mutton chop sideburns, a gray suit, and a brimmed hat. And I guess when the spirit or apparition appeared, all the guards could do was stand there sort of stunned and in shock. And during this time that the apparition appeared, the room became very cold and the stove actually went out in front of them. And just as fast as they turned and saw the apparition, it was gone in a flash. Which with how haunted Alcatraz is, it does not shock me in the slightest. And this last one is actually a little bit more unique. This seems to be more about a haunted alleyway in Brooklyn, New York. So apparently in 1878, I know, a long time ago, but apparently in 1878, a few weeks before Christmas, a family was enjoying a quiet evening in when the doorbell began to ring. Now when the husband went to go check, there was absolutely nobody there. Well, this happened so many times that he thought he was sort of getting what we were referred to as ding dong ditch now. So he put ash and flour outside the doorsteps so that he would be able to see footprints. As the doorbell began to ring again, he went out there to find there were absolutely no footprints in the flower. As the doorbell began to ring more often that night, banging on the door proceeded. The family then surrounded the windows to see maybe who was doing it or if they could catch somebody running up to the door, but as the banging and doorbell ringing continued, there was absolutely no one there. They did decide to contact the police who found absolutely nothing. And then a few nights later, a brick actually flew through the window with absolutely no one in sight. And there were even police officers sort of in this alleyway and they confirmed that there was absolutely no one there. It was totally unexplainable. And as the police were there multiple nights and could not identify where any of the activity was coming from because they were there for the activity, but they just could not find the source of it, they all concluded that it in fact had to be paranormal. This to me is so interesting because it's an alleyway where multiple people were there. It's a public place where they saw absolutely no one, but yet all these strange occurrences were happening. And I feel like to me, maybe because it's around Christmas time, it might be somebody that used to live there that's trying to return to see their family just to find that someone else lives there. So maybe they're very angry or maybe they even think that that family is like breaking in and somehow on their property. Very interesting to me. I've never ever heard that ghost story before about Brooklyn. So I wanna make sure I shared it with you guys. But that is our last story for today. I hope that you enjoyed all of these ghost stories. It's always interesting to me to hear these ghost stories around the holidays and how they sort of fit into the season. Let me know if you guys have any holiday ghost stories. I love to hear them. You know I love to hear ghost stories any day, any time of the year. I am down for them. So please let me know in the comments down below and I hope you enjoyed today's video and until next time I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!